So today I want to talk about 2016 Tesla X, which is in my position about three years right now. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you the cost of living of this car during three years. I'm having it and during about 31, maybe 30,000 miles we made on it and uh, how we've been living and what we've been doing with the car. I'm going to tell you at the end. But first of all, I want to say that just genius, the people who made design of this car and it still exists, it's still on the market and you can buy as me brand new 2023 Tesla X. But right now you can buy it long range or plate, which is exactly the same car. OK, they did change the uh, some of the style. They did change some of the panels inside the car. But outside, it's the same Tesla X as a 2016, my Tesla X 75D. Uh, I'm going to tell you a lot about this car, why I love it so much, why I don't like it. Uh, but again, I think the more I love it and less what I don't like about this car. It is a beautiful car. It is a design, I think, for 15, maybe 20 years up front. So you might going to see it. You're probably going to see it next five seven years still on the market they're gonna be selling brand new one as this one and back in 2016 when first time i see this car driving on the street i was shocked like what kind of car is that and especially the doors as everybody see the falcon doors on this car it's just amazing and it's still we are in 2023 and nobody still does the same as the tesla doing those kind of doors plus on the top of it you almost get a not lifetime warranty but there is a huge warranty on those doors only even if your powertrain got to go gonna go out of warranty your door is still gonna be kind of under warranty so the car doesn't understand if i'm leaving or i'm staying i am staying so just be patient with me please so as i say it is a beautiful car it never gives me a lot of problems i mean some small one which dealer uh were able to fix it at that time but what i do like about this car right away since i'm checking this one and i know how my new one looks like it's the gaps between the doors, between the fenders, here and there, everywhere. The gaps so perfect. Even, like I say, this car 2016, seven years old, it's still perfect. And I do like it. On the new one, I didn't like it. And probably next video, somehow, some when, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to show you what was wrong with that car when I just got it brand new. So all modification on this car I did outside and inside. I made it especially to bring this car kind of closer to the new look. But again, right now, 2023, they have a different bumpers and you can tell this car, it's something before that. But before 2023, this car was looking exactly the same and identical. That's why the Chrome Delete was made and the new tires and new wheels got put on the car. Just because it looks so nice and uh, then the previous uh, look of 2016. So, as I say, there is a lot of uh, different things I do like about this car. All the windows and doors what made on this car it looks so good but besides looks so good it gives you a lot of a lot of ability to look inside you when you're driving this car so it's like not 360 view but again the windshield on this car it made so big so up you kind of can see what's going on it's not again it's not the moon roof it's not the panoramic roof but the windshield is so huge and big so you can see what's going on up uh, if the sun is up or if it's rainy, it's so nice. It gives you a lot of kind of... So that, that kind of windshield on this car, especially, it gives you a lot of uh, joyful to drive it. Because for me, again, there is nothing to compare when I'm driving Tesla X. If I can find something on the other car when I open in the moonroof or I'm opening the panoramic roof, Tesla X, it's something different. The headlights on this car, it made so, so good. I mean, LED light at night, you can see a lot of things what's going on around you on the freeway in the city or somewhere out the city i mean i don't know how they made it but it's so perfect and i do like it a lot so the suspension on this car it's again it's the same as a tesla s 2013 it came from mercedes it is a aromatic and uh four shocks the same so it's adjustable it, it can go up can go down and again there is a lot of different things you can uh for example if you're going by and there is a there is some kind of curb you drive into your house and there is kind of bump so you have to go over it you can raise your suspension up and you can lower it down later on but same time you can save that spot in the memory of the car so every time when the car coming by that spot it's gonna raise suspension automatically and when you pass and by it's gonna go down itself which is super nice and cool i do like it a lot and it's for lazy people and sometimes i want to be lazy and i want to use it but not autopilot I am not autopilot guy 
and uh, but I am kind of Tesla guy. So there is a short story about how I got this car three years ago. So I was looking for the family car and that time I had the BMW X5 2015 uh, white one and it was kind of cool guy. I mean cool car. I do like it. It was low mileage car but again by 50 it was 40,000 miles I think and it was already start oil leaking and all kind of bullshit. And I was thinking about something nice as you need, but Tesla at that time, three years ago, they still been like kind of high in the sky. And uh, this car, somehow, I got it from the different state, from Pennsylvania, and I'm in California. So the price for this car was kind of, again, high in the sky. And I didn't know should I buy it or not. But again, I put myself together and I bought this car, basically more for the kids and for my wife, so they can enjoy some kind of new technology. But again, I got it and I didn't know how I'm gonna handle it but I passed by that and uh, I made the right choice and I think still right now I'm thinking about myself like three years ago uh, I would do the same again because the Tesla uh, gave me so much for me to enjoy the car for my wife and for the kids so I wouldn't say if I buy the new X5 or Mercedes or something else it would give me the same as the Tesla gave it to me so when the car is open, as of right now, you can see the mirrors is open. So the car is open, right? So I cannot use my key. I try to use it to open the front uh, engine compartment. I cannot. So I'm going to my app and I'm trying to open it. And voila. Yeah, so all the Teslas, like 2013, 2016, or my new one, they do have an app. You can control it, climate control and all kinds of different stuff. You can Google it. I don't have to tell you that. So basically this compartment, it gave me so much space for different things and what we've been using it for and as we're using it right now the new one it's for the toys so it's not for the stuff you need it every day but again there's a lot of toys you can put it in and uh, not only for your kids but for all the friends whoever come with you to the park that's what i love this space and it's so important to have it if you have electric car and you're using it for what the family needs and again Mercedes, as you probably see the video, we already put it on. You cannot use the front compartment. You cannot use the front space of the car, that compartment, because there is no compartment. There is a lot of components which Mercedes is using for some whatever driving performance. Uh, but Tesla, somehow, they made it from the beginning, from the Tesla S. They made the front compartment usable. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Tesla, for that uh it's really useful it's not useless so there is all a lot of information to share with you about especially this car because i do have it as my family car during three years but again from the outside for example if you don't know how to say if this car has an autopilot if it's an old one or not so if you have on the side those cameras which is like they put it recently brand new they updated and the camera here means it has autopilot like at least 2.0 or more if there is no only the blinkers no cameras on the side means that car might have autopilot 1.0 i did see some tesla's x with no autopilot at all like my tesla s so the falcon doors besides this so cool they so nice i mean they still attracting to other people because a lot of people they don't know what it is and sometimes they come in like oh what is that how is it happening i mean why the door going up there is a lot of space so it gives you the ability to go from any side and when your kids jumping inside it's like first of all it's really fun for them to open and close the door second one if you want to put your little one somehow you can go from here from there so you have a lot of space not like if you open a door you cannot go from here you have to go only from there or from the front here i mean again any side of the car you can jump easily so there is a lot of space i can easily sit on any of those three seats on the back it's a bench it's not uh, uh captain seats and especially that time i choose five seats not the seven right now i do have a seven seats but before i choose five seats with bench so because i wanted more space in the trunk that's what i got and uh it was a really cool nice decision from my side so to open and close the door you have a lot of different ways to do so so number one you do have a button right here on the side so when you're walking out of the car you can push it it's gonna close it you do have a button inside the car which kids can open it or you can you can close it they can close it doesn't matter one more third option you can do it from the middle screen when you sit inside besides the front doors 
open and close itself you can close the falcon door from the main screen but also you do have a key right now it's a card it's a useless key card but before they used to do those keys and what you can do on the side of the key when you push it in the button twice it's going to close the door for you or if you're pushing it twice again it's going to open the door again for you that's so nice on the top of it so there is one option option two option three option four and option five that just you can push on the on the handle and the door is going to be open so as we're going back to the car uh we're going to go to trunk compartment and see how much space we do have there and it's just insane because again in my opinion when i just got the car i was thinking okay there's a trunk compartment there is no uh third row of the seats right so it's going to be on the top of it only but there is a compartment and there is other compartment and when you open it there is other compartment so basically all the whole part of the car on the back side it has a lot of different compartments so you can put a lot of different stuff inside because the battery right there in the middle so they didn't use that for different kind of stuff as a mercedes to short it out your trunk compartment they just use maximum from it to give you a lot of ability to do a lot of stuff with your car and with your trunk that's just insane so as we're talking design about this car uh you might gonna see the rear spoiler on the car so some of the tesla x before i think 100d i had like couple for sale and 100d they used to have active real spoiler which was like down and when you're driving it's going up but you again you can control it from the screen and after like performance some signature i know signature on 100d i saw it couple times but after that i never see the active real spoiler again and i think even right now they're not doing it maybe on the plate but i had the plate and i'm not remember if it had that option i don't think so so for some reason they illuminated they don't have an active rear spoiler anymore so when we're talking about trunk to open it there is again a lot of different ways you can do it from the screen you can do it from the key you can do it from the app and you can do it from the button is the falcon door same on the app you can open and close it from the app that's so cool so now we're going back here to the trunk compartment let's check it out so what you can do you can do some uh some fire because you're getting some root trims okay so we we'll open it there is number one i would say the shell so there is on the top you can put a lot of stuff there is number two section right there so you can put it and close it and there is number three which has a lot of room for different kind of stuff even for the towing i never done it before i have no idea that's the front plate uh holder i never use it again because again i never use the i never use the plates i'm only driving in the dealer plate so the space inside the trunk just insanely huge and it's enough for you for your family for your friends but again if you're gonna get the the car with seven seats or six seats because some of them comes with captain seats on the second row and the third row it's always going to be two seats but it's enough for the kids not for the adult people again you might gonna squeeze yourself inside but i wouldn't recommend it because the space is really uh limited for your legs and again i don't know why they're doing that but it's kind of it's super cheap it's super uh yeah i wouldn't say this car hundred thousand just by looking on those shells so basically what you can do with all that stuff you can just take it out and stuck it in your garage and use the whole space in the trunk to put a lot of stuff if you are the small business owner or you're doing some many other kind of stuff you need a lot of space you can do so you can also put the back seats down and you're gonna have a lot of a lot of space on those seats on the top of it but again here it's just insanely huge trunk it's super easy to go inside and uh basically if i would drive myself in this position i would put the pillow and just lay down and fall asleep during we're going somewhere to the beach or maybe to the vegas and again it's so nice right now uh with free supercharge to go to vegas because in the middle you're gonna get a free supercharge station you're gonna go drink some tea or coffee just put it on an autopilot and drive it uh between the vegas between nevada and california to charge your car and again put it out the pilot and go to vegas 
So you're basically spending zero on a gas and zero on charging since this car has a free limited, I mean free unlimited supercharge uh, lifetime. That, that's just insane. And again, the Tesla S, Tesla X, they use a lot of different things from the other car, uh, cars. So, for example, the steering column and all the switches, you can find it easily on any Mercedes those years. And they've been doing it also on a X as a S. Even the dashboard, it's exactly the same as a S 2013 or 2017 Tesla S. You're going to get exactly the same dashboard and same screens. So, the switch for the doors, for the windows... It's exactly the same as on the Mercedes or the Chrysler or the Dodge or some other cars. You can find it in a Tesla also. So a lot of cool things you can find is a central cluster. So it's a cool, nice uh, iPod, iPhone. This car shows you all the things you're doing with the car. For example, if you're going to open the door on a central cluster, you're going to see the driver door is open. If it's going to be the rear door, it's going to be exactly the same or the trunk compartment. If you're going to turn this uh, light, left light on or push the brake it's going to also show you on the screen what you're doing with the car so there is a lot of cool different things you can play with you can play with autopilot what do you want to do you can play with simon if you want a car to come to you somewhere at the shopping center if you park it between the cars and it's so tiny so you can activate it from your phone and the car gonna come to you and pick you up or you're gonna pick it up the car so, which is really cool. I do like it a lot. I do like the application and they're always improving some stuff. So, like the camera. You can see what's going on around the car when you're not by the car. You're sitting at home, for example, and your car parked on the street. You can turn it on and see the cameras, what's going on inside. If somebody's trying to break in or just walking uh, on site and trying to do something with your car. So, that's really cool. And uh, the service, again, that's exactly the same same exact screen and same exact menu as a Tesla S2013. So meaning when they do an improvement, when they do new software, you're going to get it here. You're going to get it even the, on the old one. You're just going to upload it, download it. And that's it. The car is going to be exactly identical. So now I'm going to drive a little bit and show you how the autopilot, full autopilot self-driving works on this beautiful 2016 Tesla X 75D. So it's really easy. You're just going to set autopilot on your central screen what do you want to do you want to do the stop signs you want to do the traffic uh you want to this car to turn right or left itself uh without you doing any job i mean sometimes you have to touch the steering wheel or basically you have to keep the steering wheel in your hands all the time but again a lot of people like me driving it on autopilot when it's autopilot you're doing your stuff uh you might gonna fall asleep and the car gonna show you like put your hands on the wheel because I'm not feeling you sitting you're probably sleeping so the car doesn't want you to fall asleep like it's been before that's why they improve it and the new software always constantly asking you to put your hands back on the steering wheel or autopilot gonna turn off itself So we are driving on autopilot right now and as soon as you turn it on it shows rainbow i don't know why it shows the rainbow but it's there and i kind of like it the way it shows the steering control sometimes it shows it's the function unavailable you have to try it again and is it the tesla no oh, you might gonna give you some errors but after a couple tries it's gonna turn on and it's gonna drive itself what it's not understanding when it's turning right by itself there is a two lines going on right so it's just going in the middle between them uh right now it shows me the traffic light i'm gonna stop on 100 feet 75 feet 25 stop so it stopped before the traffic light and it's waiting the green light to turn on so it's gonna keep going but right now the car it doesn't know where it's going uh it just going straight by itself so basically you have to turn on navigation put the destination you're going and it's gonna drive there by itself which is super nice and that function right now i think you have to pay fifteen thousand once or you can do monthly subscription 
Uh, and again on this car, I don't have to pay anything because it's already there. As a lifetime free supercharge. So as a full autopilot, it is recognizing all the cars around you. What are you doing with that? And uh, where is it going? Supposed to turn left, right, avoid it, or park it. Any cones, whatever on the road, whatever uh, destruction you have. It's going to show it and try to avoid it. I'm not saying it's going to avoid it all the time, but it's going to try as much hard as the Tesla can. So as you get in Tesla with full of the pilot, you do have uh, three different cameras. The one on the left, on the right, the backup camera. But when you're going back on this car, all three cameras, they, they start working all together. So you basically see what's going on on the left, on the right, on the back, because again, autopilot he wants to park itself he wants to avoid any cars any cones whatever around you as you can see right now on the screen so what's really cool about the car with full self drive and computer besides the cars where it shows around you all the <clears throat> stop signs all the traffic lights all the people who's walking around you who's trying to jump under your car it also shows you where the cones sitting where the road is finishing and when you have to turn right or you have to avoid the cones and just turn left or right or the car doing it itself for you if you're going on the full self-driving mode which is sometimes unavailable and it shows after steer not available but right now it is available so which is cool let's go again we're on a full self-driving the car goes itself it stops itself and it's gonna accelerate itself but why it still shows the rainbow on my screen I have no idea but it's kind of cool for the kids so the kids really love it and enjoy it when they see that they're like wow papa that's so cool mama that's so cool i like it a lot the computer itself it sees the the speed limit for example right now we're going on the street where the 35 it's the speed limit and i can put the cruise control which is the full self driving on the 40 that's the max allows me to do so so right now it was a yellow light and the car stops itself so right now it's red and again, the screen shows me the red light. We're going nowhere because we're on the full self-driving. So there is an interesting point right now in front of us. There is a road construction and all the cars going to the right lane. And uh, just as an experiment, I want to try to see uh, how it's going to go. Uh, but it's not. So it shows me autopilot enable to proceed. Please take over. That's it. So basically we're done. I don't know why. Autopilot enable to go basically itself. It just asking me to take over the control. And it's not see what's going on as a construction over there. But it's telling me already. So I don't know why. But I have to take it over anyway. So now when the green, I'm gonna try right now again on uh sitting temporary unavailable, control not available. I think I'm just gonna smash to the construction. Ay ay ay. That's what usually what's going on with the Tesla. Uh, auto steering, autopilot. As the people saying, oh no, it's so nice, it's so... Safe to drive. It's not safe to drive. You always constantly have to check what's going on around you. And sometimes you have to take control over it. And uh, so there is a nice crown going on the black color. Sounds familiar for me. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing with the pilot? It's doing something. Okay, it sees the cones. It sees the truck. But again, <clears throat> so for me, autopilot, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of option. You do have it on the car, but you can't trust it at all. Uh, what's the point of having it i have no idea uh basically any car supposed to show you supposed to teach you how to drive the car in difficult conditions but you try to trust autopilot and the autopilot refuse to help you sometimes and it tells you just take over the control because i cannot steer for you so again if you are the new driver you just bought the car and for some reason you bought the new car as a Tesla, any Tesla, 3, Y, X, S, doesn't matter. So you bought a brand new Tesla and you do have that option 
uh, as an autopilot, I wouldn't trust it at all. So what I would do, I would buy something with manual transmission, try to drive it yourself, maybe like old Honda or old Toyota, because that car can cover all the excuses. You can drive the stick shift, you can drive the, the you can push the clutch, but do not buy the Tesla, especially with autopilot, if you have no idea how to drive the car. Because autopilot, as you can see, it's super dangerous in my opinion, and you can use it sometimes, only when you're driving on the freeway, but not when you're driving in the city, and there's a lot of different factors going on during the day, you might gonna get lost, or the car itself gonna get lost, and you're gonna get in that situation where I would say you're never gonna go. So would I buy the car right now, brand new with autopilot, if I have to pay 15,000 for autopilot itself? I wouldn't do that, especially right now. I got Tesla X, a uh, brand new one, 2023, and I got it with seven seats because this one has five seats. So we decided for the family, we do need the car with seven seats. And after a long way, we've been trying to figure out what kind of car we want, Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover, or any kind of other uh, car. We decided we're going to go back with Tesla X, but the seven seats. And guess what? I didn't buy the option autopilot. I didn't buy subscription for the monthly autopilot. And right now they're doing kind of promo. So you're going to get the brand new Tesla X. If you're doing lease or finance, I think it doesn't matter. Uh, even the cash deal, you're doing, uh, you do going to get uh, three years of free supercharge for free, which was really cool. And I do like it. But again, I wouldn't go with full self-driving or autopilot function itself at all. I don't want to pay. Uh, I don't want to pay any any money for that because that option, in my opinion, it's useless. I mean, it's kind of cool when you get in the iPhone and you do have nice cameras and all kind of stuff, but you're not using those cameras. You don't care what's the megapixel in the cameras, two, three, or five, ten. Sometimes you're using it like once in a while. You you doing the you taking a great picture on your iPhone and you're saying, oh, that's super nice camera, but you're not doing it every day. You're not using your iPhone with those cameras every day, like to take nice pictures, like, oh, I need the pictures. I need the iPhone for the pictures. I think in my opinion, that's the same, same process about the Tesla. When you get in the Tesla and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get autopilot because it's super nice. I'm going to use it every day. I'm going to go to the grocery and use autopilot. I'm going to go here and use autopilot. You're not going to do that. Believe me. And a lot of people who's using the same car or exactly the exactly the same or similar with autopilot, as as I know right now, they're not using that function every day. They're not using that option as a okay. They they use it sometimes. Like again, like me, they going on the freeway somewhere to San Diego or some other places, and they it's just comfortable because it's basically adaptive cruise control. That's what they're using it for. But in the city, they're always scared because the car going to left and right. And I wouldn't buy that option, and I didn't buy it when I got my new one. And the new Tesla, for sure we're going to do the review about it, because it's kind of not the car I was expecting to get, especially when I got that new one. After 20 miles, I did request for the service, and I took it for the service, and it's been five days at the service, so some, some problems which I thought it's never going to be there on a new car. But it was there, and the car serviced already, so right now I do have all the Teslas in my family and I'm driving it this and that. Um, it, but it's kind of the new one. It's kind of different a little bit. And uh, I'll tell you later what I think about the new Tesla X, but not right now. So what else I was going to say about the car itself during you driving it. Number one, that's soundproof. I mean, soundproof in this car is just, in my opinion, insane. Uh, without any additions, like a lot of people want to do some additions to the soundproofing and do some taking out some doors panel, put some stuff in, but I don't care. I just saying whatever I see in the car, the way it built from the factory. <clears throat> and again, I think it's really good. It's kind of improved and you cannot hear the engine or motors, whatever working, the battery, the fan noise. And number two, Besides the soundproofing, that the sound system in this car is just really cool. It has a lot of different speakers. I don't know how many exactly, but it has a lot of them all around the car. And it's cool. It gives you a lot of nice bass if you need it. But as I do, I'm listening to sub focus and all kind of other drum and bass stuff. So I do like it a lot. 
and I can listen it on a high volume, that's what the car can give you. Even if this car is still seven years old, um, it's much better than a lot of new cars, even the top brands like Mercedes or BMW. And uh, I do appreciate it. I do like it a lot. Uh, I think Tesla, the older one, they just been made so much better with so much quality as much as they could at that time. But over the years, they start getting a lot of customers, a lot of different uh, vision and the things. They might illuminate it something just because of cost a little bit higher. They try to run it down a little bit or maybe they just don't care anymore. I have no idea, but it is what it is. So as I said at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you cost of living with this car. So number one, that's the brakes, right? Again, like I said before in my 2013 Tesla S video, the brakes are cheap for this car. Even like people say, no, you cannot buy the cheap brakes because they're going to be squeaky. They're going to make noise. No, they not. If you buy a good brand, you can buy the Brembo one. You can buy especially for this car. It's going to be like $60, $50 for the brake parts, right? So the uh, brake rotors, I mean, you can buy it about 150 each one, not the original one. Even the original one they use in Brembo, uh, you can buy that. So the wheels, I put it from the new one, and I'll tell you why. So the size of my tires, the price for that size was about, because it's run flat, so it was about, I would say, 400 each piece. So 400, going to bring it 1600 for four new tires but again my rims would be the same with a lot of scratches on it and it designed from 2016 so what i did i checked some some resources to find where i can buy the wheels all together from a brand new one and i bought those rims the one on the car right now from 2023 tesla x uh for 2000 which is about 400 difference between brand new set of rims and tires and just the tires itself i think it's not that bad uh, full self-driving computer, I did that at the dealership uh, for 1800 and it was about a year and a half ago, or maybe one year ago. Uh, what else I spent on this car? Nothing. So I spent zero on the charging. I mean, I do charging at home, and the new one right now, and this one I was charging at home. It's not that costly, but again, okay, I spent that money over there. But any supercharge I'm passing by, I'm stopping by and charging my car over there, and it's cost me nothing. So the AC, I never touch it. I did some filters like once in a half year, maybe the filters are cheap. So there is a perfect example of why the people don't care. It was a small like entrance in and out from that spot because there is a trucks up front. They're trying to uh, upload, download some stuff in the car, and this guy just came by instead of just stay on the curb like other trucks he just tried to squeeze himself in and block the street completely he blocked the driveway for all the people who's there or who's trying to go there on the small cars that's what's going on in the lane sometimes people don't care and uh we're going back to the prices so basically the filters each filter i mean it's only cabin one you can buy it for about 20 dollars there is oil in uh in a drive unit you have to change i never done that before in fact this is 2016 tesla x still has a warranty from the dealer up to december 2024 which is one more year and a half for all with all the powertrain plus i did the axles for free i did some sensors for free and uh, they fixed the falcon doors a couple times because they were not opening fully and it was under the warranty under warranty this under warranty that it's super nice it's super cool and i think whatever money i spent three years ago and whatever car is worth it right now it makes huge sense for me it does for you i have no idea i would say in my opinion this car 2016 with all the stuff i have on it it's worth about 40 42 000, right and the new one it's worth 105 hundred thousand dollars which is i think useless uh but i did that useless point and uh i bought the new one even if it was a lease i still think it's a lot of money because again if you calculate it as a money 
1500 a month for three years is going to bring you to the value of this car. So it basically, for me, it's better to buy this car and finance it. And you're going to get exactly the same one. Okay, you're going to get new dashboard and new bumper, but that's it. So in general, I would say it's not worth it, in my opinion, to buy a brand new one. But I already bought it, like I always saying before, and I'm saying it right now. I'm doing some mistakes. I do like it because that's my journey of life. And I'm just sharing with you if I did mistakes or it was not mistake. So this car, in my opinion, was not a mistake. It was a huge win for myself. But the new one, the one I got, it was a huge mistake what I made. And I have to live with that because it's my decision. There is nothing else I can do. So it was a beautiful day. It's a beautiful car. Do some comments, put some thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching it.